Gonna do a quick video on the PBS 31 Alphas. This isn't gonna be super data-driven or really technical. I'm just gonna go over a little bit of the history behind them, things that I like about them compared to other offerings on the market, and then um, some things that I think are kind of overrated regardless of what uh, night vision devices you guys run or choose to run. Um, so yeah, we'll kick it off. It... PBS 31 Alphas, I think the nomenclature was the BNVD or binocular night vision device. Uh, these replaced uh, PVS 15s within SOCOM. Um, and so, you know, SOCOM, pretty much anything they touch, battery testing, put it through the ringer. I know there's been some fragility questions brought up about these. I, I genuinely do not believe that these are any more or less fragile than any other BNVD on the market. Uh, I think that you're just seeing that because the end user, SOCOM using, units and law enforcement agencies for the most part, really you're putting these things to the ringer so i mean if you're using more of them naturally more are going to break right so i can say you know out of a hundred or so people over a deployment we might break one or two pairs of nods or these particularly and generally it's going to break at the hinge points getting out of vehicles so on and so forth and so and that's under some pretty intense uh conditions so i think for the commercial side I do not think it's going to be an issue for, for most people. But, you know, when I look for a, a night vision device, weight is huge. And so when we moved from the 15s to these, the, it was like an instant morale boost because the 15s, 1.7, 1.6 pounds, these are just under a pound. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but on your head with everything else, wearing these things for hours on end, you know, every day of the week, made a huge difference. Um, so one of the biggest thing other than tubes, uh, that I want in MBGs is lightweight. And so as far as I as far as I know and what I've seen, these are still the lightest binocular uh, device on the market that is in a, a, a reputable housing. So PBS 31 Alphas come from come from uh, L3. They're manufactured by L3. Tubes get stuck in by L3, so you're not having to worry too much about middlemen tweaking with your stuff. I know it's it can be a shady industry uh, in the commercial night vision world. But uh, L3 filmless white foss are the standard. Um, I know they make uh, aviation tubes as well with higher specs and all that jazz. These are the contract tubes. I think it's a two, three, seven, six minimum FOM rating. I don't have the spec sheets on these ones because they are contract tubes. And quite frankly, I don't really care. I mean, I know that these are quality tubes in here and there's no spots, no blums. They work great in low light, no no issues. So another reason I wanted to go with the 31 Alphas on the outside is I knew where I was getting them from. I knew nobody had tampered with these things along the way and, and I got a good deal on them, but that's kind of besides the point. So they have these bikini covers. Some dudes will take them off. Um, I leave mine on because I don't really think it's that big of a deal. I just kind of push them up like that and they're pretty out of the way. One of the complaints about the PBS 31s for most guys is not having adjustable diopters. So these are, I think, 0.5s, yeah, 0.5 diopters, which I think hits like the 90th or 95th percentile of people. And if you look at the units that these went to, the requirements even for entry are is correctable vision up to, I don't think it's 2020, but it's pretty close. So even guys that are, you know, have terrible eyesight and getting LASIK or whatever. So Adjustable adopters are not really a huge factor, and adjustable adopters add weight, so I don't think it's a big issue, and if you have prescriptions, you can reach out to L3 and get the adopter specific to you. So, yeah, it's another hoop you got to jump through, and you might have to wait a bit given that it's L3, but I, uh, I have no issue with that, and I think the glass on these, I don't know what it is. I've looked through a t few different types of PVS-14 glass. This glass is clear, like, period. That might be more empirical or maybe placebo, but that's that's my approach to it. It's also just another spinning thing on the back. You've seen them, or those of you who have been around night vision for a while, have seen, you know, 14 diopters come loose, or you're having paint pen stuff, or you're having to adjust every time. It's just another thing you gotta fuck with. So I'm not really a big fan of the adjustable diopters for that reason. On the front, similar uh, adjustments to the uh, they might even be the same to the GPMVGs or the quad tubes. So one thing a lot of people don't know is that these are actually built-in sacrificial lenses. 
So you can unscrew these if they get shattered uh, and force on force or break and uh, get new ones from L3. Pricing, I have no idea, but just something to keep in mind. So when you're, you're pricing all this stuff together against other units out there, it might seem cheaper, but when you start adding in all these other accessories you're about to go through, you're getting pretty even with the 31 alphas, even if you're going DTNBS with similar spec tubes. So um, these, these are a complete unit. They're vetted, so I would rather have these than sack lenses from some fly-by-night company. Uh, another cool thing about these is that I know uh, Augie Kim did a video on this, so I'm not trying to take credit for this. I didn't even know this um, when I was in, but I guess they have flashbang protections in them. So, I mean, a flashbang, what is it? All it is is a flash, right? So my assumption would be that that would protect from other bright lights and flashes in here. So probably less likely to damage these than night vision that do not have those protections in them, right? Another thing that I'm glad they did, and you could tell they were taking user feedback when they did this, is they removed the illuminator. I have never seen the night vision illuminator on any set of nods, whether that is 14s or 15s, you know, take your pick, ever be used for anything other than signaling in like patrol bases and like ranger school and like basic training style ops. Um, the illuminator is not powerful enough to push through what you need to illuminate on most housings. I haven't seen one that is at least. And most guys run dedicated illuminators on the helmets if they need them. So I'm glad they got rid of that. It just adds weight and it's a fairly useless feature in my opinion. If you need an illuminator, go buy a Surefire V1 or an M1. Um, one awesome thing that I'm glad they put on here, and the 14s have it, then when we were running Ambus 6s, they didn't have it, and then 15s did not have it, is uh, manual gain adjustment. And so in layman's terms, this knob adjusts the brightness in here, kind of like turning up and down the brightness on your phone or your TV, which doesn't seem like a big deal until you wear it for a long period of time, particularly in urban environments where there's a lot of light. Uh, when you have these things on the full setting for like three hours, four hours, five hours in those environments, the eye strain becomes pretty pretty noticeable and a lot of dudes will get headaches, not just from wearing the helmet, but because of the eye strain. So being able to dial that down if need be, or maybe you're just sitting, you know, around pulling security or whatever, and it, you know, not a huge deal to have that like level of perfection clarity you might need within a building or whatever. Uh, being able to dial down that brightness is really nice. So manual gain, awesome. This is also the power button. So you just hold it in to turn it on, hold it in to turn it off. Uh, I think it takes about three seconds per and then you can program this to some degree um, when you flip them up on your mount for the tubes to turn off, uh, roll in a tube. I think there's a way you can do it to where they turn off. I don't really mess with all that stuff because I don't really flip them up, but whatever. Another cool thing about this is built-in uh, IPD adjustments. I have personally always been a fan of fixed bridge systems in terms of adjustability. The fixed bridge systems, one of the arguments you know for articulation is like, oh, it's nice to be able to roll your nods out and, you know, do whatever. And rolling the nods out is nice for stowage. Um, or if you're doing something long-term where you have to keep your helmet on and you don't want your nods in your face, sure. So you can stow them like this horizontally, or when you stow them vertically, you can roll them back into their helmet, make it low profile. But that's really only a factor, in my opinion, from what I've seen, if you're running nods stowed during the day. So say you're going out on missions that are going to be a few days on end and you're out there during the day, it's nice to be able to keep your nods mounted just in case you got to enter buildings or whatever, because they could be dark inside, right? Or, uh, you know, you're carrying a lot of other shit in your kit and, you know, real estate's at a premium. It's nice to be able to keep a lightweight set of nods mounted. That way they're right there whenever you need them, regardless of what time of day it is. But for night use and most other things, I really never rolled them out. Uh, even when I was doing SSE or whatever, I would just usually take off my helmet. So it's one of those things where <clears throat> I think it's it's kind of overrated because even when I was running fixed bridge to the Ambus systems at night, I would just either usually adjust my nods mount to where I could peek under and then peek up through my nods kind of just by looking up or down. Or, um, you know, I would just kind of push push up on the nods and peek under my helmet. Like it was never really that big of a deal to me. Maybe some guys don't want to have to move their helmet around. Maybe it's like a safety thing. I don't know, but I just, 
I think the articulation for most instances is kind of like not super necessary. Yeah, I guess it's kind of a cool factor, but even with IPD stops on, on articulating housings, they're not as precise adjustment wise as fixed bridge systems. That's one thing I really liked about the Ambis systems and I'm sure most other fixed bridge systems have this capability is the ability to dial in just micro adjustments and they're, they're always there. Now uh, with these IPD stops, they're decent. Uh, they work essentially with just a little ball detent. If you can see it right there, that bumps into this. And so as you tune them, they move out. Or if you want them more in, you push them in. But the IPD stops, I think regardless are, I wouldn't say necessary, but I do like them if I'm running articulation simply because if I have them rolled out and stowed, all I have to do, one handed, I could keep a hand on a weapon if I need to, or if shit just got wild and I need nods, and just take one hand and roll them in and they're set where my eyes are. I'm not having to drop everything and adjust them to my eyes and all that noise. So that is nice. These aren't the uh, the best I've seen. Like they, they can come loose at times, but nevertheless, it's nice that they're included with the DTMBS. You're going to have to buy them extra, and they're like a couple hundred bucks, which honestly I think is kind of. Kind of a bit much, but again, I don't know what went into all that, so I'm not going to rag on it too much. And so, I mean, the 31 Alpha is when you when you start getting into the accessories, right? So with the DTNBS, I know that they have like battery pack adapters, the Dick adapter, or whatever that it's called, and and most other goggles that you you get out there to get um. A battery pack, you're gonna have to buy the pack separate and adapter separate. This is kind of what it comes with. It's got the user manuals, uh, some lens tissues, eye cups, which I have never seen anyone use, but uh, I understand what they're there for. It comes with two Wilcox amber lenses with the adapters. So I was not a huge fan. I know on the 15s guys would run them to kind of give a yellow tint to green FOSS tubes. I I think they're better than the eye cups for uh, eye splash, but a lot of guys would use them kind of like as like a ghetto gain control thing and, and would swear by these in terms of eye strain. So come, some guys really love these. I'm not a huge fan, but I like the fact that I have them just in case I'm ever in an environment. Not that it's likely now that I'm out, but where I don't want that much uh, of a signature with the, the backsplash up the nods of my eyes. These work really well. And then they, you have the cable for the battery pack. I'll give you a little tie down thing, but the pouch is really nice. Uh, and it comes with a cold weather battery pack. I'm guessing the reason they call it that is for cold weather. This is pretty money. I, I think that in terms of single battery, these take double A's. The DTMDS takes one, two, threes. And most of the ones I've seen on the commercial market take one, two, threes. Uh, so I think this is only like 15 or 16 hours off a single double A, but then you can add four more. So this is pretty nice just to keep mount on your helmet uh, just for a longer duration. And so the only doubt thing I don't like about this is it has a built-in strobe and this thing always gets knocked on whenever you're doing uh, pretty much any type of vehicle or helo born kind of, I'm all packed in there with 40 dudes and my head's not gonna get shit. This thing has a tendency to switch on, so dudes will take over them. Um, I've seen it as far as some dude taking it off, um, so. But once you, but once you, I guess my point is, once you factor in all these accessories and the kit, so on and so forth, you're, I think retail, they're like 13.7. I didn't pay 13.7, and I won't say who I got these through, but I, I would not get these, um, there's only a handful of night vision companies I really trust. I think TMDC is, is kind of the gold standard in terms of uh, advertised night vision, short of going direct to L3 or direct to Elbit or any of these companies. Um, so I, I wouldn't steer too far for that because I've kind of seen in this industry, dudes get uh, kind of screwed a lot. So just do your homework. But you know, at 13.7, I think TMDC even does like a mill on law enforcement discount. Um, with all this stuff, plus the tubes, plus the, the peace of mind knowing that, hey, these tubes have, or these, this system 
has been vetted by an organization with, you know, a damn near limitless budget by comparison to others. I think it's totally worth it. And you're, and you're right in line with other articulating systems that are popular now. So is it worth, you know, the, an extra 2000 or 3000 over the DTMBS? I, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's personal preference, but I think if you're, if you're looking at an articulating system and you want to take the buy once, cry once approach, um, I don't think you can go wrong with 31 alphas. I still think they reign king uh, in terms of dual tube systems. I know they have the Pano bridge now, but actually TMBC put out a really good uh, paper on them. But th there are some downsides to the Pano bridge, I guess is what I'm getting at. So uh, if you're looking at dual tube systems, 31 alphas, in my opinion, the way to go. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, come down below. I'm not super technical on this stuff. I know just enough to kind of get by. I'm, I'm not a scientist like these dudes, like Sam Houston and these guys. Um, so those guys are, are good to go watch their videos if you're looking for more technical aspects. This is just end user kind of knuckle dragger uh, approach to, to night vision. So yeah, I mean, that's about it. If you like it, subscribe, comment below, and uh, I'll, I'll bring some more videos soon.